okay, here we are. I got the camera set up. I think I've got the right lighting. <laughs> here we are. We're going to start the zinnia class. We're going to do the three zinnia. A lot of you, I've taught thousands of people this beautiful zinnia flower, which wins a lot of award at quilt shows. But everybody asks me, how do you do the three zinnia? So I'm going to show you today. It's um, going to be in a two class series because I couldn't get it all in one. So, and unless you want to sit there for two hours, which I know you don't, you want to get busy working on your flowers. So it's going to be two classes. If you don't know how to fuse, you can watch my how to use steam a seam video. If you have a problem trying to get the sticky off your needles, pins, scissors, you can watch my how to deal with the sticky of fusible web video. All of those things are out there. I'm not going to cover them in this in this class. I'm assuming you've already figured that one out. But um, you can just go to the YouTube channel, Melinda Beulah Designs, and you'll find me. Um, but otherwise, we're going to do the zinnia. This flower is just one of my favorites. And so I hope that you'll hang in there with me. If you need any supplies or kits, I've made a bunch of different colors on my um, store, so you can go over there and see it. If you want to stay up with the latest videos when I, my video classes, when I teach them, you need to hit that button down there that says subscribe, and um, you'll get a notice, I think. Or you need some help, you can email me at melindabuladesigns at comcast.net, and all the information will be down below. And thank you for taking my class again. I hope you've taken the dogwood and you're excited and want to do another one. So uh, let's get going. We're doing the zinnia class. We're gonna make the three zinnia quilt with one zinnia pattern and different sets of fabric. These are the colors I'm gonna make my next quilt out of. This is the yellow, this is the pink, and this is a new berry. We also have orange and I also have purple. So you can decide what colors you wanna do. Now, how do you make three quilts without getting really confused? And I wanted to make the three zinnia as fast as I possibly could. And making three separate fat flowers seemed to me very boring, because it is boring. So what I decided is I'm gonna do an assembly line with these three flowers. Now, if you have taken one of my classes, you probably have this pattern floating around someplace. Go find that pattern and find any undone zinnia you may have because now we can add other colors to that you've already started one of the flowers and it's probably going to look something like this it's probably going to look something like this okay with some missing pieces falling around okay that's okay this is still good to go and i'm going to show you how to save it and how to start, okay? So that's your first assignment. Go find your pattern and any leftover quilt that you have and your pattern pieces, because now you're ready. Now, if you don't haven't taken a class from me and you want the pattern, you can get the pattern on my Etsy shop, Melinda Beulah Designs. And you don't have to make all three of them if you don't want to make all three of them, but oh, it's such a big wow quilt, all three of them, why not? lots of different colors you can make this in. So the key to making the zinnia is setting up everything the right way from the very beginning. And as you know, the first thing I always have you do is you're gonna to have to make a color chart. Okay, now if you find your pattern, you'll probably find that you have a color chart there that's gonna help you organize your colors and they will all still be there. But if you haven't done this before, I. I folded my pattern like this and I put it in my printer and I printed three of these, one for each of these colors. Now, I did it just because my printer was set on a color printer. I did it on a color printer. 
but you can do it on black and white. It'll still work with black and white because we're going to cover all that up. So make yourself a color chart um, for each color that we're going to use. That's what our first step is going to going to be. Now, for those of you who haven't done this before, here's how you make a color chart. And bring my berry color over here. This is a new colorway called berry. All my kits come with a color chart. If you're selecting your own cup fabric at home, you're going to kind of look at the values of the colors on the color chart. Values are from the lightest, these three are the lightest, down to the darkest, which is K, and that's black. You could make this blue, green, turquoise, pink, fuchsia, whatever color you want. As long as you arrange all the colors like I have here in a value range. Okay, these colors over here are pollen in the center and those are highlights. And the greens will come in later. But the first main colors from A to K, and don't freak out, there's no J. Okay, he left. He walked off. He walked off the set. And we can't find it. I got rid of Mr. J. Okay, so you want to arrange them from A to K, from the lightest to the darkest. And then we're going to take, if you buy a kit from me, no matter what pattern it is, I have these little notes, my little post-it notes. You're going to put, this is letter A, Oop, this fabric's letter A, this fabric is letter B, this fabric's letter C, D, E, F, G, this is H, this is I, and black is K. Okay, so I'm just going to save those right here for now. Now these colors right here, which are L, M, and pollen, so these are little sparkle colors I call them. Okay, L and M are little sparkle colors. So for sparkle colors, what the sparkle colors are is they are the little tiny new leaves in the middle of the flower that are coming out. And they are different colors. In fact, in one of my red flowers out in the garden, they're lime green. So you can pick, I, I'm picking over here, I'm picking two different colors, kind of a lavender pink and then a pale pink for my L and M. L is darker, so this will be my L. This will be my M. I'll put my little things on there. And my pollen, pollen can be green, it could be yellow. On this one, I'm, I think I'm gonna do um, this lime green for my pollen. I think that will look good. You know, if you want to change your mind, we can later because these are just stuck on to each other. They are not fused until we get everything the way we like it. So we have freedom to change our mind. And then for our center, now you'll notice if you bought the kit or in the pattern, I have color letters O and P to make up the center of the flower. And what I was doing in the beginning as I was hand dyeing one fabric and I couldn't find fabrics to have that look. It was a modeled fabric that had darks and lights in it. And then I started finding some other batiks, like I found this, I found this batik that has some lights and some darks in it. And I'm thinking we can use this one fabric for O and P. Okay, to make the center. So this is the one I'm gonna use. And I'll show you how to get it, the pattern piece on half of the dark and half of the light, which gives a three-dimensional look, okay? I've used all colors for the center. It could be, um, you could use an orangey um, center for this flower. The key is if, to know what color goes good, is lay it on top. It'll be around these lighter petals, and I think it looks good right there with those lighter petals, okay? So that's the color we're gonna use. Or let's say I'm going to audition it. If I change my mind, I'm going to change my mind. That's what we do as artists. We change our mind a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to take these and I'm going to pin them on. So I'm going to pin these labels on right now. Okay, I pin them on right at the beginning. I'm just pinning them right in the middle of the fabric. I'll adjust it all later. 
but I want to make sure that I don't get distracted, that um, an animal doesn't jump up on my table and uh, or somebody open the window or the air conditioning and they go flying all over. I spend a lot of time getting these in the right order. I don't want to lose that label. So that's why I'm pinning them on so I know they're on there. But the thing about pins is pins fall out over time. You may have found that in some parts of the state and the world, they also rust on your fabric. So what I've decided to do is I make a color chart with a glue stick. And I'm gonna cut a piece, take my pink fabric. I start at the top with the A. I'm gonna take my pink fabric, I'm gonna go down here somewhere, and I'm gonna cut a little swatch. I'm cutting a little swatch of my A fabric. I know it's A fabric because I just pinned the A on it, and I'm gonna glue stick this on and cover that color up. Okay, now I know that's my A. I'm gonna do it to my B. Just going through and checking to make sure everything's lining up the right way. The color chart is really important because during the process of making three flowers, sometimes these little pinned um, letter tabs will fall off. And you will always go back to your color chart to know what color is A, what color is B, and so on. And it really is helpful. So make sure you really do do the color charts for all three colors because it's going to help us later. Now you're going to need to make a color chart for the other two colors. Once we get our colors all organized and identified, then we can start cutting out our flowers. This color chart organization really does help us stay organized during the process of making three flowers at once. So here I have all of my fabrics identified with their letter for my three flowers. And then I've done my color chart. I know that you're like, why do I have to do this color chart? Let me tell you, if you start losing and can't figure out what color goes to D, E, and F, you're gonna have a really hard time. So I say, take the time to do this. So the first colors that we're gonna do to build, we're gonna build all three flowers at the same time. The first colors are gonna be my A, B, and C for my berry color. I'm going to need my A, B, and C for my orange, and my A, B, and C for my yellow. Love this one. We're going to build a big base flower made up of your A's, your B's, and your C's. Then we're going to press them all together, and then we can add all our little highlights which make it really look like a flower. So we have to identify those first big base shapes. And the big base shapes are all identified on your pattern piece with this rectangle. And they're also larger, and they also have a darker edge. So for my A color right now, I just want these big giant petals that have a rectangle in them. They also have a color square too but I'll tell you about the color square later because I don't want you to get confused. So, these little tiny pieces, don't bother cutting them out yet. We will cut those all out later. Now we're just using one pattern sheet for three flowers. Okay, so that saves you like 40 extra bucks. So I'm gonna cut out my A pieces, this is from pattern page number one. For once I'm organized and going in, in order, how's that? So I'm gonna cut these big pieces and they all kind of look like teeth or they look like chicken parts, fried chicken parts. Okay, and I'm gonna say that this little piece right here, I don't wanna lose him. So I'm going to take them and put them over here, and I'm going to use like a pen or a wonder clip to hold them in there. I love wonder clips. You can never have too many wonder clips. So now I have my first A pieces. But because it's thrilling, I think, is there any more A's anywhere else? Yes, there's one more A on page three. 
Okay, so I'm going to cut him out. He belongs with his family. Now you'll notice that on page two, we have all bees. On page three, we have some big bees right here and one right there side with those other pieces. There we go. So now the bees are all together. Now page four has all your C's on it. Okay. And then page five has a few more C's right here. Okay, so I'm going to cut them away from that page also. Here I have my A pieces. And here I have my B's. And here I have my C's. I want my A for my orange flower to go on my A pieces. A for my yellow flower to go on the A pieces. And I'm going to do the same over here for the B and C. So this is my B, my B orange, and my B yellow. And then over here is my C berry, C orange, and C yellow. And I've got my color chart sitting right up there so I can see it. Okay, how are you with me so far? Now the fun part. Okay, we're ready now. I have my fabrics all fused and they're all color A for my pink flower, my orange flower, and my yellow flower. And I'm putting them all together like this. And now I'm gonna take all my A pieces and I'm gonna start laying them out. Now I'm gonna lay these big ones out also. I mean, not big ones, but these little little ones and it's kind of like a puzzle so you kind of have to put them in like a puzzle get them all in i'm going to put a pen in each one of these big pieces you got to use the right kind of pen though the kind of pen that you want to use is you want to use a flat head pen flat head pens or this is also a good pen these little rubbery blue ones that they have out now in different colors because they're a strong pin and they're easy to grab the heads don't come off them what you don't want to grab is one, one fine applique pins can you see that one there those little fine ones do not work they will bend the minute they go through this paper and three other fabrics they will bend. So what you want to use is you want to use a flat head, flower head, flat head pin, or um, one of these kind of pins, which I like both of these a lot. These I have these on my website if you don't know where to get them. So I'm going to take one pin and I'm going to poke it in through all three colors. Boom. Okay. Again. One pin in the middle. You don't need them all around the side. I'm going to be cutting through all three fabrics. That means with one cut and one pattern piece, I'm going to cut out all of A29 with one cut around the edge here. That just saved me a lot of cutting time. Okay, I'm going to show you something that I use also. Here I, here I have the pins. In, but you can also use Wonder Clips. Wonder Clips are great. And these are the big giant ones. So I'm going to show you how I use and how I cut them out right here. Okay. I'm going to go in like this and I'm going to remove this big chunk of pattern pieces from the other people. I can move my Wonder Clip over to the side here. Okay, so I'm going to move this guy down, and I'm pinching with my fingers. Okay, I'm pinching with my fingers as I cut. And I'm cutting somewhere close to that, that line, holding them in my hand. And it's thick because you got three layers there. Now, to hold it together really good, I move my, my clip, and now I can just go all the way around this. And there you go. Now I've cut out the yellow, the orange, 
and the pink. Look, they're all there. They're all there. And I can leave just one, I leave just one wonder clip on to hold them all together while I go and I work on the others. So here we go. I have gotten all of my A's, B's, and C's cut out. And there they are. Now what we're going to do is we are going to separate them by the color that is on the piece. Right here you can see. We've got a number one. I'll turn it the right way. Number one right there. It's an A12. But now I just want to look for this one process. I'm going to look just at that color. And I'm going to put all of the ones that have a one on it in this pile. Let's scoot all these over. Anything that has a number two on it will go in this pile. And anything that has a number three on it will go in this pile. And they are going to be a mixture of A, B, and C's. Okay? So I'm just going to go through my pile. This says that it is a number one. So it goes in the number one pile. This one, number one, goes in the number one pile. And let's see, these go in number one. This is a number two, number two, a number These are all going to lay down first. These are all going to lay down second. And these are going to lay down third. That's our order of assembly. This is called your layout guide for the Zinnia, the Zinnia quilt. It's our map and it's going to show us where all these pieces go. And on our layout guide, if you'll notice, there are numbers here in little rectangles. Let's get up close so you can see. And these little rectangles correspond to the numbers that are on, on our, our patterns. Like this says number 12. Okay. And I started numbering ones over here. So every petal here has a number on it, okay? Every single one, a different number. And they go in order, and they start right about at, I don't know, what would that be, two o'clock? And that's number one. And we're gonna go on the outside petals. We're gonna lay them down first, and then work towards the middle layer, and then the inside layer. It's a layering process. So number one is right here. This is number two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and it goes all the way around. When it gets to 19, it comes on in. Here's 20, and now we do 21. You also have a little schematic, and this little schematic is a miniature version of the big so when we cover this big one up, you can always refer to this, where is my number 10? And you can find it and you look on here and go, oh, look, there's number 10 right there, which is number 10. Okay? Okay, if you've done some of my patterns before or watched some of my videos, you know I use nonstick. This is kind of a repositional silicon parchment paper and I sell them on my website you can use regular parchment paper aisle seven a piggly wiggly but this helps us because it's non-stick and the fusible web will not stick to this and we can iron on it there are six sheets in here and for three zinnia flowers we're gonna need all six sheets so I'm gonna take and put two together for each color of flower we're gonna do. So here I have two 
of the parchment papers and I need them to fit this layout guide. They need to fit this whole layout guide. So what I do is I'm going to take this and I use my stapler. And you've probably seen this on another video. I'm just going to staple a fourth of an inch down, putting these two sheets together. Okay? I've got a row of staples right here. Then I'm going to flip this top paper over, fold it where the seam of staples are, and now I have a very clear see-through parchment paper to build my flower on. Okay, so this is pattern piece I don't really care about the A anymore because I've cut it out of all the A fabrics. But I need to look for number 12 because that's going to tell me where to lay it down. And I know one's over on that side, but I know I've counted already out and I found that number 12 is right here. See how, in fact, you can lift this up. Number 12 is right there. And I've cut out all the patterns for the pink, the yellow, and the berry color, or what should I say? No, it is yellow, orange, and pink flowers. So now how am I gonna do this? So let's move this over here so I don't lose it. So I'm gonna write at the top that this is my berry, my berry layout sheet right here, okay? I'm gonna take some of my jumbo wonder clips and I'm gonna pinch them so that I'm holding my layout guide is not going to wiggle. You do not want this to come apart. And thank goodness that the those jumbo wonder clips they pinch really tight. They work out great. Okay. So here I know I just reached in and I've got this is my berry color, which is on the bottom. So I'm going to put my berry down right there. And that's where it goes. Now I'm leaving my other colors, I'm leaving my other colors, okay, on the pattern piece until I get to the yellow and the orange. And this is where the Wonder Clips come in handy again. I'm going to use one of these small ones like this to pinch them all together so I don't lose them. And I'm going to put, I'm doing just my number ones first and just the berry first. So once you've taken the berry color out of this, you need to put this in a different place. So I'm gonna put all of those up there. Then I come to my next piece, and this is number 18. Number 18 goes down right here, right in this spot. But I want my berry color, because this is the berry layout guy. And so I'm gonna lay the berry right there. I'm gonna take another wonder clip. I'm gonna press the wonder clip right there, and then I'm gonna put it in that pile up there. Now, when you lay these down, you have to take off this release paper, okay? And you expose the sticky. And then I'm gonna go back, that's number 18. Now, sometimes they don't wanna stay because see, this is non-sticky and maybe it'll wiggle around a little. So what I do, I put it in place, take my iron, I'm putting the 12 in place too. And I'm just gonna warm it up and warm this up with the iron. It'll make the sticky on the back of the fabric hot and it'll stick into place. And press it with your hands. Okay, now I'm gonna reach into my pile number one again. Here's my pile number one over here. And I'm going to Assemble my flower. Let's do one more again. I reached into this pile. I'm going to show you the pile. Do you see that pile right there? I'm reaching in this pile. I'm grabbing a piece. You do not have to go in order. They aren't going in order and you can't, they aren't laying the right way. You know, some are going to be laying on top 
if you see a dotted line around your pattern piece, a little dotted line, that means something's going to lay over that, that dotted line. Okay, but we're all working on the outside. This says that it is a number three. So I have to look for petal number three, petal number three, right there. Petal number three, but I only want to take out the berry, which is that color. Wonder clip it. Wonder clip it and put it up in that pile for my next flowers. And this is number three. Number three goes right here. Take off the release paper, lay the piece, and I'm, I'm when I lay it down, I'm trying to line it up in between the outside lines here, between the outside lines. Sometimes, depending on how we cut, see this right here says open space, so that's supposed to be an open space. But over here, it looks to me like I, I chopped that little edge off right there. It's not going to matter as long as I've got it lined up with these outside edges right here. So it goes in there, in there, and like that. I'm going to go in now and I'm going to get, here is B, it's B4, but you know, it's the first layer that goes down. And I want the pink one because I'm making the pink flower. There it is. So I'm gonna put these back together, clip them. And remember, that's B4. I gotta remember that this piece is B4. I'm putting that in that pile and we're gonna find our four and here is our four right here. Your layout guide only has numbers. It does not have the B indicated on this pattern piece. So you're just looking for the number four here, not for the letter that indicates the color. So here I've kind of sped things up uh, to show the process. I'm reaching over again into that pile of number ones. Then I'm taking out the pink, putting the orange and the yellow back on the pattern piece pinning them or wonder clipping them and then setting them aside. And I'm just methodically grabbing from the pile. And I am steaming this. I'm just gonna, I've got water in my iron and I'm just gonna steam this. I'm not, I'm not putting the iron on this, but I'm warming up the fabric, which warms up the fusible web, which allows me to press it down and it sticks.
I'm going to take my steam iron. I'm not touching it to the fabric. I'm about a half an inch or an inch away, warming up and then patting with my hands. This allows me, if I make a mistake or I change my mind, I could change out, lift up these pieces and remove them without them permanently adhering. Like I don't want those two to permanently stick to each other yet. Now I, that's all a mixture of colors, but that was all layer one, the blues. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get my layer, my pink layer, my layer two, and I'm gonna continue on this same flower with all of the layers. Layer two, and I'm just grabbing them in any order. 27. Layer two, 27. And then I pinch the other colors together and I put them in a pile. Now I have my last layer, not really my last layer, but my third layer, the yellow number threes. See those yellow number threes? There it is. Those go on next. My A's, my B's, and my C's are on my berry flower parchment paper. These holes right here, there's a piece that goes here, and I think there is another little piece that goes right in. No, I think it's this one, 35 and 22 are on the M page. So I uh, fused all my M's for the three flowers and these with the yellow, 
the yellow threes go in these holes right here. So I'm going to cut those out and put those in right now. And I will cut out the other little ones later. So I've got my M's in. There is supposed to be a gap here and there's supposed to be a gap here. And now I'm just going, I'm not pressing it again. I'm just going around, hand pressing it with steam in my iron. I'm going to take my flour and I'm going to very carefully lift this up and I'm going to move it someplace safe. Now I'm going to take my parchment paper again, make, um, take two of the sheets, layer one, I'm going to do this one, it's going to be orange. put orange on it so I know this is my orange layout guide. I'm doing the same for the orange flower that I did for the berry flower. I'm starting with all the pattern pieces that have the blue one on them and I'm going around and matching up uh, their pattern number that remember is in that rectangle. And I'm just working around the outside edge and then I'm pinning the pattern piece back on the yellow flower pieces and putting them in a different pile. And I'm going to do all of the blue squares this way, which is layer number one, which is the outside edge of the flower.
Now we have the yellow, the orange flower, and the fuchsia berry flower. And they look lovely. Now we're ready to put the centers on our flower. 